Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Uh, okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. Uh, well, folks, I posted the open interest of the E-mini S&P as of yesterday, at yesterday's uh, volume, and also the open interest yesterday with that huge move to the upside, breaking into new high grounds. If you look on the far right over here on the first line, you're going to see this red figure right here. That means that open interest was dropping. And when the market goes up and open interest is dropping, that is short covering. That is not new buying. That's why this is a red flag if you're long because uh, if it's red today after the day we had today, look out because then we're getting ready to move down uh, very, very quickly, I would think, because when the buyers leave the market, the only thing left is uh, short sellers and they're not going to give up but that's what the history says it doesn't always work at all well it always works that way but this might be the time when it's different i want to show you a chart uh today a couple of charts that we were watching this is the e-mini s and p hopefully we'll get it up here there we are uh this is a uh it's a 15 minute chart showing the action over the last couple days and you'll notice here that it was measuring up to the uh the abcd measured up here to uh, 40, uh, 46, uh, 46, 28, and the high was 46, 34. We backed off uh, just very slightly. But what's interesting is I'm, you know, I'm basically a technician. So if we do the, uh, if we do the chart on the Dow Jones, just using a 13 or 15 minute chart, whichever convenient for you, you're going to be able to see that uh, we did pretty much exactly the same thing. We did go into new high ground in the Dow Jones. That's 14 days up. And we sold off a little bit. The market has since bounced back into the uh, congestion phase up in here. But that this open interest is important, folks. So tonight's open interest, if it's increasing, then, boy, all ships are sailing. But, boy, if something happens that it turns, it can be very, very nasty. So uh, just keep that in mind as you're looking at these charts. Uh, we had a really great trade on about five minutes ago. We had bought the bonds at uh, one uh, 124 uh, 22, and we had a stop in at 124.12, and I just noticed that that was hit just a few few minutes ago. So there must have been some type of a a news out announcement. But we had one really really great trade today, folks, and that was in the if you remember uh, looking at the euro yesterday and the and the British pound. We happened to be in the British pound because it was the uh, the easiest one to look at. But uh, I wanted to point out here. Let's get this up here so you'll be able to see it. We said to watch for the 382 retracement of the euro today after the Fed had done their thing. And that's exactly what happened. Here's what, what happened before. And uh, it's, by the way, after it hit this number right here, I hope I can pull the chart up. After it hit this number right here, it's since made new lows. That's a $1,500 move uh, in the euro uh, which is uh, pretty good. We had a small loss in soybean oil, but the overall uh, British pound and has has held up really well for us profit-wise. So we're we're setting pretty nicely there. But I do want to give that. Uh, oh, well, here, let me let me explain to you. Here it is, right here. By golly, I've got it after all. I'm going to figure out how to use this thing one of these days if I'm going to live long enough. Hold on, a second. and I, I'm going to live a long time. Hold on one second here. There, there's what we have. Ah, Larry, come on. What's wrong with this machine, Al? It doesn't want to pull up my charts when I get them up here. Hello, operator. Let's try it again. Go slowly. Take a deep breath. Okay, here is the euro chart as of today. There it is. You can see the, the, the ABCD pattern sitting right there at the 50% level, just a perfect ABCD pattern. The, the British pound was exactly the same, sitting there at... Uh, at 130, it's now 128.20 or something like that. It's a big drop in the British pound. So those are the kinds that we want to be watching 
uh, for today. Now, the one we had in bonds was absolutely a beautiful setup. You couldn't get any better for a setup. And yet, and yet, let's get this up here so you can see it. It just didn't work. Well, it worked for six or seven pips. But let me get this here, and I'll show you what we were talking about. We did this on the show yesterday, so that's what we have to realize is when these patterns don't work, oh, dear, you have to be careful. You'll see here, this was the low we were looking for right here at 124.20. One four one twenty four twenty. We put the order in at one twenty four twenty two. The low was twenty one. It rallied up to one twenty four thirty, and then just a few minutes ago, it uh, took our stop out. We had a ten tick stop, three hundred dollars, and it was knocked out. So that's uh, basically uh, what's happening here this morning. So we got to pay close attention to these market folks. Long term, the bonds are very very bearish, but they're extremely oversold, and we should get a rally. But should, would, and could doesn't always cut it so you got to be able to do it the thing that's moving this market folks are these uh the stocks like uh, microsoft and uh well not microsoft so much but um nvidia and also meta meta is up like 10 percent today several other stocks are you know quite strong and they're really just knocking the socks off everything but the key for us today and th this was something that uh we we knew was going to happen the problem is had an order in it, missed us by a dollar and a half, so I couldn't do very much. And that was in the gold market, and uh, it it's broken thirty dollars, but uh, we didn't get uh, didn't get on board that one. Um, and we had uh, we actually had uh, two losses today. We had a loss in bonds, and we had a loss in the uh, soybean oil. Those totaled about uh, six hundred dollars, and we up about a little over twelve hundred uh, in the British pound. So it's a profitable day. We also made a recommendation. Uh, on the E-mini S&P, but I, you know, I don't want to get into that because it was pretty wild, and I, well, I guess I should because I, I did a special video on it, so bear with me here, and I'll try to get this up here. I think the easiest way to do it is just to look at that first chart that we did because that was pretty much it. I wanted to get, see, I, I do ABCD, folks, and I try to find the patterns and say, okay, I have to possibly risk a few bucks on this, and then I'll do it. Oh, we had one other one. We took a, uh, we, we tried soybean oil, excuse me, crude oil, and it dropped a dollar a barrel. And, uh, you know, what we did is we put our stop at break even, and believe it or not, it went back and took it out as made new highs. It looked like that was going to be the high, but it wasn't. So at one time it had $1,000 in it, but it uh, got back to break even, and so we decided to stand aside and it's continued to go higher. But if you look at this ABCD pattern that we have here, I said, you know, if, you, if it doesn't get above this number by very much, and that number was – uh, 46, uh, 25, and I said you have to use a 10, 10 point stop. The high was uh, 46, 34, broke all the way down to uh, 46, 10, and then it's rallied back. And I, I saw a little gyrations going on here. I don't know what the heck it means, but this market's pretty crazy, so anything could happen, and uh, like it usually does. So that's where, we're, by the way, our guest today is Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. You know, always fun to be with, and so we're looking to. Uh, listen to see what he has to say always great stuff stay tuned for bill meridian cycles research folks attention traders Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN. Educating Investors. 
Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have an old friend on the line, Bill Meridian. How are you doing, buddy? Okay, Larry, how are you? Pretty good, pal. Pretty good. Uh, what do you got, Bill? Can you make any sense of what the hell's going on out there? Because I people ask me, and I said I've never seen anything like this. Fourteen straight days up in the Dow Jones. H has that happened before in history? I heard on Bloomberg that this would be the first time. No. Well, Fox uh, Business News said it last happened. I can't remember, but it's happened before. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! I'll have to find out. I'll have to Google that myself and see if I can find it out. What do you have for us today, my friend? Well, first of all, I'm going to start sharing the screen. Can you see that? I Oops. think so. We're, we're in business. Yep. Uh, uh, Al says they're not seeing anything yet, so let's keep uh, let's keep trying if we can, and uh, should be okay. Ah, oh, there you go. We're in business right now, so everything's cool. And we'll just repeat Russell Warren how a reasonable probability is the only certainty. Mm -hmm. Just to get started, and um, this is the summary. Stocks are likely to consolidate correct through September. I'll explain that. There was one cycle that appears to be overriding the others, the bullish period that runs from the midterm elections, which was last October, for 15 to 18 months, which would take us to January or March of next year. This influence remains potent until the end of the year, at least in 2022. Technology lagged and energy led in 2023. This relationship has reversed. So I'm expecting a rolling correction. Funds flow out of the tech leaders into energy, finance, industrials, smallest cap stocks. Then I expect everything to be up in Q4. And again, here is the old uh, one four ten 10 year cycle. The one year cycle being the annual cycle of the year, which is I think where all cycle analysts start. I know Art Merrill had a great influence on me and that got me into cycles. It was based on the one year cycle at the Market is strong in the summer, which is where we are now, weak in the autumn, strong in Q4, and etc. Then the four-year cycle, which has been attributed to the election year, but as Ian Notley used to point out, they have a four-year stock market cycle in countries where there are a six-year election cycle or no elections whatsoever. And uh, the Fed props the – the uh, market up for the incumbent. Well, the Fed only came online in 1913, and the cycle existed before that. So I think we conclude 
There's a four-year cycle, which has been measured most accurately, I think, is 3.84 years. And then, of course, the 10-year cycle is the decennial pattern of Edgar Lawrence Smith, who did say that most bull markets, most bear markets, end in October of years ending in a two, which this one certainly did. And that is sure did. the that this is the summary of all those cycles. And you can see you've got um, uh, supposed to have a mid-July peak, which we didn't even really. Well, I should technology pulled back. I'll say that or consolidated, and then we then it shows a rally up until uh, early August and the usual September into October decline. Now, whenever you look at this one forty ten year cycle, you have to realize that that decline in September 1929 was so dramatic that it really should be extracted out of the numbers because it, it uh, pulls that down. Any way you run the cycle, these cycles or a combination of these cycles, it will show a weak September for that reason. The one was the last time the market declined 90 percent, 1929. There's only been one. Mm. So here's the S&P 500. I just updated this. And let me just start that. This, I saw this formation. This is an ascending triangle. You saw lots of them mm -hmm. in the uh, tech bull market of the 90s. When it breaks out from here, which I predicted it would, now, how did I know it would? Because the cycles pointed up at that time. That's the value of cycles. It augments, supplements, or adds to technical analysis. And, oops. How did that happen? Okay, um, where were we? 3,500 and the top of the triangle is 4,200 and textbooks will tell us that once it breaks out, it should move up by the difference between these two amounts, 4,200 minus 3,500 or 700 points, which would put it at 4,900. And right now we're just under 4,600. But what you do, just to be conservative, is you go to the first one here and you see uh, that's 3,800 up to, it's about 400 points. So you say 400 plus, well, 4,150 is 4,450. Did we get there? Yes, we got there right here. Mm -hmm. And the market gapped up. So now you go to the more aggressive. You can go back here. You can measure from here to here and back. So the, the, uh, this move should have fully extended itself but once it advances up to about 4,900. And the market likes round numbers, so it may even be 5,000. And so what is happening is, and I just updated that. Oh, the S&P equally weighted index is gaining in relative strength. I just very quickly updated this. That's why I cut the strength off. But uh, that is the index itself. It's equally weighted. In other words, 500 stocks, it's not capitalization weighted. They are equally weighted. And look what has happened to the relative strength. Now, I said to myself, technology is probably, it usually always is the leader on the downside in September. If the market is going to continue up, then it means probably that some funds will flow out of technology but go into other areas. And I've been watching this line very closely. So now, since late May, the equally weighted S&P 500 has not made a new low in terms of relative strength, and it shows a series of higher lows in momentum. So here is the value line index. Now, the value line index, again, is equally weighted. And you see it broke out of this formation right here, and you'll note that the relative strength has been holding up and made a new high here, a new high here. So to go back and explain the, the first statement in the presentation, a rolling correction means the big cap tech stocks that have the most influence on the capitalization weighted indices, they will probably go sideways or hit by some profit taking. It already started, but now they're rebounding today. Because as we'll see, September is sort of Death Valley or the um, uh, black hole for technology. And so in, in order, if, if they pull back, and I don't expect the average to go down very much. That means the money is flowing out of those stocks into other stocks. Mm -hmm. That's how I come up with this. And how do we know? This is from last week. Look at the new highs and new lows. July 17th, 138 new highs, 21 new lows. The next day, 202 new highs, 16 new lows. The 19th, 162 new highs, 8 new lows. Then 101, 10, 94 to 7. 
as long as you're having on the New York Stock Exchange or any market, new highs that much ahead of new lows, you've got a bull market. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is the weekly S&P. This shows this triangle a little bit better. You see this 3,500 area. Oops. This is a new PC, by the way. I'm not familiar with the keyboard. But 3,500 to 4,200 to 700 points. You had 700 to here, and you get 4,900, which is up here, which is just over this. So this will probably be a resistance area up here around 48, 20 or so. And we, we have got to, to go sell something to keep the we lights gotta on. We've got to sell a okay. make a few payments. Thanks, Bill. We're Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. We'll be right back with him, folks. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, talking to Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Please continue, my friend. Yes, and here we see the value line index equally weighted. Now, this is 16 to 1,700 stocks. So this is probably the broadest base and one of the better indicators. And, of course, I went to work there in 1977, so I've, I've followed it for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And there are the new highs and the new lows. There's the weekly S&P. Wow. And here is the average Dow Jones Industrial Performance in the month of August. Now, remember, this is from 1885. All Augusts wow. 
up 47.4% of the time for an average loss of 0.8%. August in pre-election years up 50% of the time for an average loss of 1.1%. Years ending in three, which is the decennial pattern of Andrew Lawrence Smith, up 53.8% of the time for a 1.1% gain. Both of the prior conditions up 67% of the time for an average change of 2.4%. So if you take the third, the last case, then actually August looks bullish, which I, I guess is what you could say right now. As I said, we haven't hit the we haven't hit the um, targets on the upside. Now let's go to September. Same analysis. All September is up 47.4 percent of the time for an average loss of 8.3 percent. September in pre-election years up 50 percent of the time for an average loss of 1.1 percent, slightly better. Year ending in a three, up 46.2% of the time for a 1.2% loss. And if both the prior conditions are present, which is pre-election year and year ending in three, then we're up 66.7% of the time for an average change of minus 2%. So here we are. Here's Apple in the month of September. This is a histogram which goes back 43 years, back to 1980. The red bar is the percentage of time it is up in a given month. So here you see October, it's up over 70% of the time in the month of October. The blue bar is the percentage gain, which is that's about 6.5%. And the green bar is the product of the two of them. That's the expected return. So in other words, that would be 0.7 times about 6.5, which would come out to about 4 plus, which is what this is, as we can see over here. So you can see we are moving from July into August. So should you own Apple right now? Well, yeah, it's up more than 60% of the time. And not only is it up, it is up for a good gain of over 5%. The expected return is represented by the green bar. Let's now look at September. September, it's up 35% of the time. That's the weakest. You'll notice the weakest of all the months. And not only that, it's a substantial loss, over 4%. So this is one of my favorite trades, Larry. Long Apple, short till late September, and then long up until October, up through the end of October. And you might as well then hold it through the rest of the year. So uh -huh. this is one of my favorite strategies. And I'd like to add that when my friend Robert Colby wrote the Encyclopedia of Technical Indicators, he calculated that the average high in every year is – September 5th, the average low, as we know, is October 27th. And had you shorted, if you could have shorted the Dow from 1915 on September 5th and covered on October 27th, you would be you would outperform a buy and hold by 3,000%. And when he published wow. that book in the late 90s, then what happened was when people realized the average high of the year is actually September 5th, what happened? But the top started to occur in late August. August 25th, August 23rd. And so that is how these cycles change. And if you're waiting until September 5th, it's usually uh, not wise. It usually begins, the decline begins somewhere in August. Now, here's the tech sector in autumn. Bill, Remember can, I, I, said, can yeah. I ask you a question? That sure. September 5th, uh, uh, is, is that heavily influenced because September 3rd of 29 was the high? Is, is that influenced because of that, because it was such a big high? Yes, Okay, just wanted to ask. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, that's why in the old astro analyst program, we had a facility for dropping that cycle out so you can get a more mm -hmm. accurate picture. Now, here's okay. the tech sector in the month of autumn. You'll see it usually tops in July, and it's still up. It has a weaker month in August. Let's see, it's up in July about 67% of the time. Then it is up in uh, August 57% of the time, but... It falls down to about 46, 47 percent in September and for a sizable loss. So what I used to do in Abu Dhabi is I would take profits in Microsoft, Intel, Cisco and buy automatic data processing paychecks. I did that because they were in my field, but the P.E. ratios were 10 and the P.E. ratios of the stocks I was selling were 30 to 50. And I would just reduce the weighting. Later on, I found out when I saw these graphs that August, September, and October are the best months to own 
automatic data processing, paychecks, all these payroll processing stocks. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether that's a natural cycle or whether other fund managers were doing what I was doing. And, of course, the grandmasters of wisdom who've never managed money in their life insisted I stop doing it and creating <laughs> too much volatility. If you want such a job, there are two qualifications. First is a pulse, and second is to never have having managed money any time in your life. Yeah. So right. now here's the sector performance in September, and you will see now energy – is considered a defensive or a value sector, and the XLE is first. It's up 54.17% of the time over 24 years for a 1.19% increase, which is an expected return of 64 basis points. Then there are the utilities, and that is the S&P 500, and here's technology. So it's actually up 45.8% of the time, but that's better than healthcare and consumer discretionary and basic materials, which are all down in the 30s. So it actually doesn't get hit as hard as some other sectors. Now, it ha this happens every summer, and this is an old, should we call it a trick or an investment maneuver that I've been using for years. Here is Archer Daniels Midland. And you see where I put the, the green dot, the two green dots? Mm -hmm. That is August 4th through December 31. It's up 81.4% of the time over 43 years. 43, uh, 43 years is not a small sample. It's not as big as we would like. But that's awesome. The return is 12%. The expected return, which is 0.8 times 12, is 9.8%. Now, that's 9.8% expected return, and you're only holding it for, what, five months? Mm -hmm. So I did a calculation once that if you bought and you held Archer Daniels Midland, uh, from the beginning of this, from 1980 up to the present, you would be up uh, on average about, I think it was 9% annually. If you mm -hmm. bought it here and you sold it over here, you were actually, I think, down 8% annually. But if you bought it here <laughs> and you sold it up here, you're up 32% annually. Now, this is the most biased, one of the most biased stocks I can find. It's not that way for every stock, but you should use every advantage when you're managing a portfolio. And, of course, uh, we both know what Archer Daniels Midland does. It is not a tech stock. It is not a high P.E. stock. So I think it's a very safe investment. And last year, bought it. Got to pay a few bills. Tell you when we come back. You got it. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. We'll be back in just a moment. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, I have a quick question, if you don't mind. Yes. What's no, your don't. feeling on uh, – what's the feeling about uh, – art? <laughs> folks, by the way, I want you to know this. I've known Bill for almost 38 years, and he is one of the smartest people, not just the market stuff in general. He knows history like uh, – especially Civil War history like nobody I've ever met. But the question I have for you, Bill, is um, what is your feeling in the overall scheme of things of what AI – is and what do you think will happen? Because I hear things on the news that literally, and I've seen a couple things that scare me. Do you have an opinion? It'll be like every other invention. In 1983, the brokerage firm I was with sent me to an AI symposium or conference, and I sat next to a guy and I said, "Hi, my name is Bill. What do you do?" And he said he gave me his name. And I said, "He said I'm an AI specialist." And I said, is there any such thing as AI right now? And he said, no. But he was an AI specialist. So wow. I think it's like every other invention. It's going to, um, in many areas, it's going to flop because people are, you know, I, I do you read a lot of specifics? I, I no. don't. I read a lot of people mm. saying AI, AI, and they get excited mm. emotionally. I said, okay, AI to do what? Now, one of my friends in Austria, Sabria Lagoon, is uh, an Algerian woman who uh, works for Merck. She's working on her PhD for uh, an AI for information processing for the health industry. And she showed me it working on a, in a mini form on her, her PC. And uh, it enables them to access medical information much faster. And so if you, act, if you request a certain thing, the AI is intelligent in the sense that it sees the subject and it brings other such documents to your attention. Okay. And so you could write, she could write a question like, if uh, this this um, illness is um, very prevalent or growing in France, you know, what is the expected outcome? And it would go through and it would find out the prevalence of that sickness in all of the European countries. So do you want me to look at the world too? Yes. And it would put together a study for you very quickly. But I don't think it is going to, I wouldn't trust it right away. I mean, look, a couple of Teslas have crashed, haven't they? And uh, all inventions in the early days, the general rule is, you know, stand aside and let them work out all the bugs. You know, but in, in this case, the bugs, if it's flying an airplane or something like that, um, you don't want to be a casualty of the bugs. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I don't think I don't think anything, but yeah, you know, it's certain areas. It's going to be great. Like, you know, in the example I gave you from my friend in Vienna, how far wrong could you go just sorting through medical records? I mean, that's my point. But uh, for coordinating airplanes and things like that, you know, glitches occur everywhere. And you know, my chief programmer on my my program, uh, they have come up with the uh, drone air traffic control and their primary purpose was operating 
mission critical service for the airline industry. In other words, if you're flying in Southeast Asia, there's a hurricane, blah, 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 you know, don't fly down there. And so they have to keep, and I, I could see the effort they had to put, you know, to put in, you know, if they, if they, if they missed something and didn't update something or a server went down, uh, they're in a lot of trouble. And so in the early days, you'll have a, it's like a gold rush. You'll have a lot of people who will rush in. And uh, then there'll be a shakeout. And as a consumer, you don't want to be involved in the shakeout. And uh, did I tell you I went to the uh, hemp and cannabis industry show in June? Uh, no, you haven't. Yeah, that, well, this time I went, yeah. and there was a big difference. Four years ago, five years ago, there were a lot of people who, you know, like, hello, my name is so-and-so. I'd like to get into the business. This time, I'm waiting. They do a cruise around Manhattan at night in the first night of the conference. And I'm talking to this, uh, these two ladies from Bermuda. I didn't know we're native Bermudans, and they, they have their own hemp and cannabis business down there. And then I met a young guy and a girl, and uh, they have uh, shops in Costa Rica and in Washington, D.C. And then I met another guy who got a couple of drinks in him and told him they make these, uh, if you're growing cannabis indoors and you're stacking it, they, they make these metal frames that enable you to stack like a number of planters going up and down. In other words, it is, is, is congealing as a solid industry. And about five years ago, somebody told me, Bill, if you know, if you knew what the fundamentals were beside some behind some of these companies, you wouldn't buy anything. And I think the shakeout has occurred because the stocks have done very poorly. But this time, everybody I met was somehow one lady does public relations for the cannabis industry, another person who was a lawyer handling, another person handled finances. So in other words, it wasn't I want to get into the industry, so I came to meet people. It was I'm already in the business. So the basis of that is forming. Wow. So I don't want to be a victim of the early days of AI in an AI-driven taxi or something like that. Anyway, Archer Daniels Midland, up 81% of the time, automatic data processing. Up 74.42% of the time over 43 years from July 30th to December 30th. Is it an exciting stock? No. Is it got a low P? Yeah. What's yeah. expected return is about 10%. Uh, but remember, that's 10% over five months. Um, and then um, here's Procter & Gamble. June 27th to December 22, up 93% of the time. Expected return 11.4%. Well, that's about half a year. So you could double that. That's 22, 23%. Low P ratio, again, low risk. So the point is, I'm going to switch some of the stocks. I'm going to sell off some of the tech stocks in which I've made money this year and buy probably all three of these. Well, those are good question? probabilities. When you look at those probabilities, they, you don't see that very often. You know, that, that's no. really quite amazing. And uh, now this is the current S&P 500 screen, which is my main screen. And rank number one is NVIDIA. Uh, next is Quanta Services, Advanced Micro Devices, Microsoft, Vulcan Materials, S&P Global, Synopsis. I think that's Copart. I'm not really familiar with them. CRM is Salesforce. And uh, NTAP is, boy, the name's right on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it. Uh, and DHI is... Uh, D, it's the Horton restaurant chain. Mm -hmm. But the first number is the seasonal rank. In other words, in the month of September, NVIDIA is ranked number three. This was run on the NASDAQ, by the way. Oh, no, this is the S&P 500. RSV is the relative strength. In other words, it is the strongest stock, number one. And number two, seasonally speaking, it's the third strongest in the month of September. So you add those together, divide by two, and you come up with the overall rank is two. But it is way ahead of what's in second place. So mm -hmm. this is the list of stocks that I'm – this is what I use primarily to screen the number of stocks down to a manageable amount. Mm -hmm. and, and so, of course, you see NVIDIA – in other words, even though it jumped, it's still very highly rated. Quanta services I have to look into. They man manufacture machinery, advanced micro devices, of course, chips. You know who Microsoft is. Vulcan Materials is just that. It's materials. Seasonal rank, it's 40th best performer of the S&P 500 in the month of September, and it's currently ranked 28th in relative strength. I always give this RSV column more weight than the seasonal column. Okay. And now this says, now this is, I just added this, to, I just spotted this this morning, so we are actually going to click and go to my program, and this is, you need to run another ad? Okay, yeah, we'll should you, when you come back, back could, you, could you give us a uh, heads up on sure. what you think oil and gold are going to do? 
as soon as I finish Google. Sure. You got it. We'll be right back, folks. Bill Meridian Cycles Research. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, please continue. Yeah, we well, see monthly, we have a buy signal right here. See, I did this because Google is reporting earnings. And as we know, movement at uh, earnings reporting time is going to be a greater magnitude than rest of the time. Now, let's go to weekly. Weekly, you see a buy signal right here. Now, let's mm -hmm. go to daily. Daily, pal. And you see it went on a buy signal a few days ago. This is what I do when they're reporting earnings. And when you see something like that, you assume it is going to be a very good earnings report and the stock is going to move up. So I still favor Google, a bull of technology stocks. I don't think has moved it as much as the others. So I like that one very much. Mm -hmm. And so gold entered its best season. Price has paused at the 50% retracement level. The 21st was a projected turning point. So price has already exceeded the important 30% retracement level. The gold summer rally has begun from June 7th through October 10th. Price has risen about 62% of the time. The $2,000 area is the short-term target. That's what the histogram looks like. So as I was saying in June, you might as well hold on to your gold holdings. You're in the best season right now. In August, it's up about 
well, this is the expected return. But it's up 60% of the time in August, 61% in September for a good magnitude gain. And there's always usually a correction in oil and gold around the middle of October. So I'm holding gold. And, oh, there's the uh, – uh, there's that uh, gold has risen 62% of the time in that time period. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as for oil, I thought oil was going to go a lot lower. I was getting ready to short the oil stocks, but there's one problem. They didn't break their support levels. So now I've turned more optimistic, and uh, I'm looking to buy selected energy stocks. And I okay. think uh, you know the, the worst months to hold energy is October, November. we got a couple of months to go. So I think some of that uh, money may flow out of tech into energy. And here is a contrary opinion and wind power, trouble in the wind in Barron's, which is a buy signal for anybody who's involved in wind power. <laughs> and Bill, thanks for joining us, my friend, and may God bless. We really love having you on here. Well, I enjoy it, too. Thank you so much, Larry. You bet, you bet buddy. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow.